everyone, it's Q. Welcome to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel out there. And I am no expert. And I want to show you something you're going to have to do after you burn the Apollo OS image to a compact flash and boot up and accept the basic options it presents you with. Because then you're going to reboot, you're going to come back, and you're going to be in this, this operating system that they've got. And one of the things you're going to notice right away is that depending on what size compact flash card you used, the available space doesn't seem to match up. Like 30% full, 227 megabytes free. And then this other partition, 95% full, 147 megabytes free? Hmm. So what happens is the image it burns, burns two partitions of a certain size. And then the rest of your compact flash is just unused. It's just sitting there dormant. So how do you get to that space, add some new partitions, and actually be able to utilize that? That's what this video is going to be about. Now I am running the latest core as of, um, well, mid-December 2021, which is R8, um, a version of R8. It is, uh, I believe, uh, beta. If, you know, it's going to be, it's not completely stable, but it's enough that I can show you this stuff. And the important thing is how to get that hard drive space back that you, you have in that compact flash. It's a little different than what you might be used to on a traditional Amiga. Remember, this is not Commodore Amiga Workbench. This is Apollo OS. So what we're going to do is go to uh, Tools. And the first thing you're going to do is there's if you're running this uh, R8 or newer version is... And everything I'm doing today, by the way, you, I'm a, you really should be having the, at least the R8. Um, you can see up in the corner here, it says R8. So whether you have to, well, you can't see anything up in the corner because it's it's cropped out. Well, it says R8. And it's important to know that um, all the advice I'm giving, it just requires R8. You can go to the, to the Discord group and find it there. That's a, in fact, if you go to their website, it tells you to go to their Discord group and, and then someone will post a link or have a sticky for it. And as always, in the description below, there will be a... Um, a little bit of a link for you to click. Okay, so maximize hard drive, or hard disk as they call it. And just this is just a pop it open and click okay. And it's gonna say, hey, your thing is bigger than it is and blah, 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 you wanna make it bigger? And you can just do what it says, press enter. That's it. Now, are you done? Of course not. That is like some magic trick that tells the compact flash, hey, we're gonna do stuff to you. So now that you've done stuff to it, Go ahead and clean up some of these windows. We're gonna to go to the HD Toolbox and you'll be like, this looks like nothing I've ever seen before. Yes, this is their version of HD Toolbox. You're going to double click this. That shows your compact flash. Mine's a 32 gig and it says 32 G. Yours may say something different. Double click it again and you'll see our two partitions. So what we're gonna do is click add and then this kind of looks sort of familiar, right? Click in the empty space. Now one of the things you can't do, at least currently, is click an empty space and then start dragging around. So you just have to say okay. And now it made another partition called DH0, quite confusingly, but don't worry. Click on it, click rename, click into here, backspace, backspace, DH, we'll call it two. You can click the return key, but that doesn't seem to acknowledge, so I always just go ahead and click okay. And that seems to work. Next, what we can do is go up to resize. This work gets a little weird, so I'm going to try and do this in a way that makes sense. I'm going to be clicking the partition I just made, this massive 26.5 gig. You're going to click over here and then go back, 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 back. Then type 1.0, arrow key in front of the G, hit the return key. Okay? Now you have a one gig, a more manageable, Amiga-friendly one gig partition. If you do, if you try to stick it in here and, and just type 1.0 and hit enter, it's not gonna be, it won't do any, it'll be like 0.1 megabyte of a hard drive. If you try to type in manually 1.0 G, it won't work. If you try to put letters in there, it says, no, you can't do that. So I just use the existing field that it has and then click okay. Pretty janky, it's beta guys, but that's how that part works. So next, gets a little more intense after this. And for this, I'm going to need to print something that I can read off of. <laughs> These are the settings you have to do next. 
I'm gonna say them out loud, but I'm gonna hold this here really, really still. You can pause on it, but probably put these in the description too, right? You know, the description down below. That might be wise, I'll do that too. So the next thing we're gonna do is click on DOS and VEC. And then in here, we're gonna click in this field, this mask, again, clicking and then using the backspace, backspace, backspace. Also, try to avoid using the numeric keypad on your Amiga if you have one. Stick to the regular numbers across the top. Two, one, four, seven, four. So we've got two, one, four, seven, four, eight, three, six, four, four. Don't click enter, don't do anything else. Click here in front of everything. Backspace, backspace, backspace. One, three, zero, five, six, zero. And then everything else in here stays the same. Do not change the block size. Buffers, we can do 600, suggested. Click OK. Now, we're still not done. Now you go, that was the hard part, by the way. So if you made it that far, good job. Switches, auto mount, that's all we care about. And then the other important thing, change type. Here's where you pick the file system. You see a lot of stuff in here, right? It's like, ooh, look at all this stuff. Yes, pick Smart File System BE, Bud Enterprises. Click OK. Now, see this button down here that says Parent? Par parent. You're gonna click it once, you're gonna click it again, and then you're gonna click on your ATA device, and you're gonna go down here where it says Save Changes, click Save Changes. It says this, say yes. Then click exit. Then control Amiga Amiga reboot. Watch how fast this reboots. We get to see this reboot in action. Okay, look at that. There's our DH2 uninitialized. Right click, format. We will call it work. And you don't really have any options, so work. Quick format, format, ta-da! You have a work partition with a gig free. I did the gig because I know this is like modern Amiga and everyone's like, but it's modern Amiga. It is modern Amiga and a modern operating system, but a lot of old programs get really weird with gigantic partitions. So even on hard, you know, original hardware Amigas, that maybe the only thing you do is replace the platter drive with a, with a compact flash or SD. I really discourage anything larger than a two gig partition. And a lot of times I just stick the little one gig partitions. Also, if you notice up here in the top, I'm gonna move the camera for you. Okay, so you see there, I have 474K of chip RAM. So yeah, again, this is a hybrid type uh, add-on for your Amiga. It doesn't completely replace it. It's currently limited to the chip RAM that is on the Amiga and you know, it's providing uh, a CPU um, and it's providing an RTG video card and sound and LAN if you wish to use it. I'm currently using um, the CPU, of course, and then the RTG. So what happens is, what if you tried to run a program that requires one megabyte of chip memory? It's, it's not gonna work. Amiga's gonna complain. The program will probably crash or if the code is smart enough, it'll say, hey, dummy, you don't have enough chip RAM to launch this program. So this doesn't solve your chip RAM problem. No! yet there is stuff working in progress that allows you to as advertised turn your non-AGA Amiga into an AGA Amiga and along with that you'll have like 11 megabytes of chip memory so fixes that problem but that is something that is still a work in progress and is ongoing so for now I'm not using that I'm sticking to my paltry 512k that means I really can't do much of my 3d software stuff I like to do but that is something to be mindful of if now if you get the 1200 version of this that's coming out the ice drake your 1200 will have two megs of chip memory and you'll be able to load up anything or if you have a 2000 that has one mega chip or has a two meg chip uh, add-on you'll get two megs of chip if you have an Amiga 500 with one of those amazing DKB two meg chip thingies then you'll have two megs of chip or I think there's an Indivision 2 meg chip thing for the Amiga 500 as well. So that's how you get around. Those are the other ways to get around the chip memory limitation. 
But this video is about showing you how to get the hard drive expanded and looking, uh, you know, for looking at it the full size of the hard drive instead of being limited to just uh, what the, the default image does. Now, uh, one of the things I do suggest, so you've done this most basic thing. All you've done is installed, you've initially flashed the drive with the operating system, you've booted it up, you've gone through the default preferences, you went through my little video tutorial on how to make the hard drive, um, how to make a partition. And by the way, repeat what I just did if you wanna add more partitions. Just go back and you can click add and do, but hey, but, but what, I'm, what I'm getting to now here is important. Before you do that, just do this most basic partition add so you have this one gig partition to play around with. Shut everything down, pull the compact flash card out, okay? Take it to your PC and use Win32 disk imager program to then make an image of that compact flash. You're basically going to make your own new image instead of relying on the downloaded one. Why would you wanna do that? Well, I think it's obvious because now you'll have an image with all of this stuff done. You'll have all the initial preferences set. You'll have your new expanded hard drive with this partition set and everything will be hunky-dory. And you won't have to go through that whole process again. Now, if you wanna go through, through the initial process again, um, you, you've got the original image you downloaded. But this way, if you screw something up, if you mess a number up and you're creating partitions or you install some piece of software that breaks everything, at least you're not going back to ground zero. You'll at least get over this, this little uh, modification you've done to get your hard drive space back. So, um, and honestly, anytime you do, do any major changes, you should re-image it. It's not that hard to do. I keep the top off my Amiga, most of my Amigas, honestly, for situations like that. But just something to think about. I hope this video was helpful. It showed you how to do this basic thing. It also gave you a little more overview of the R8 of Apollo OS. And I hope uh, the chip RAM thing made sense. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a great day.